Hello everyone and welcome to the Tank Club. I'm TC Lee and today I want to show you a nice little trick for how to crowd control enemies with an immobilization on all classes. So right here I am on a Nightblade tank and one of the common problems with a Nightblade tank, with a Templar tank, with quite a few different classes of tank is they have low impact crowd control skills. And what I mean by that is on a Nightblade tank, for instance, we have mass hysteria. Now the problem with mass hysteria is the fact that it is a fear skill. And the reason why that's a problem is because when you chain in an enemy with Silver Leash, you can then not fear them. You are not able to fear an enemy that has recently been chained. The reason for this is because of crowd control immunity. So when you chain an enemy, you cannot fear them straight after. So what that means is when you pull in a bunch of enemies in an ad pull, they could potentially run off because now we don't have a chain taunt. So the enemies aren't going to be aggroed to you and you don't have an immobilization skill. All of a sudden you can pull a lot of enemies in and they run straight off again. This is a big problem for Nightblade tanks, for Templar tanks. It can be an issue for Sorcerer tanks as well, because their immobilization skill is only a line immediately in front of them. Now, there is a way for us to actually crowd control enemies that I haven't previously talked about very much. I haven't previously discussed this. Um, this is something that I myself only kind of... It, it clicked a few days ago. In my brain, I was trying to figure out how can I optimize an ad pull setup for a dungeon group, and all of a sudden it triggered to me that there is something we can do that will achieve an immobilization and a bunch of buffs and debuffs as well. So, for a Templar tank as well, you would probably use a really expensive stamina skill, which is turn evil. So, this is again 3600 stamina. To fear enemies. It's going to fear enemies. So now, on pretty much any sort of dungeon build, this will be a pretty standard back bar. So you'll have your range taunt, you'll have your crowd control skill, in this case mass hysteria, you'll have your blockade, you'll have uh, whatever skill here, so usually balance or something along those lines, you'll have your chain and then your ultimate. Now, one thing we can do is... We can use Impulse as a crowd control skill. And the reason why is because as a tank, you are going to be using an ice staff on your back bar. Now, if we look at Impulse and the Pulsar Morph, if we look at what it says here, the new effect applies minor mangle to non-boss enemies, reducing their max health, triples the chance to apply the respective status effect. By using an ice staff, this means we're going to increase the chance to proc the chilled effect. So we're going to take that and we're going to slot it in place of our crowd control skill. Now the reason why this is important is because now we're able to cause the chilled effect with a triple chance. If you look at the skill blockhead of frost, chilled enemies become frozen and are immobilized for 4 seconds. So, Pulsar is an area of effect skill, if we cast it there. Everything in this area is going to be chilled. When we then chill the enemies and put down blockade, it is going to freeze those enemies because of the chilled effect. It's going to immobilize those enemies. Now, to make sure we can get the chilled effect every time with Pulsar, there are a few things that we need to do as well. So, in terms of our destruction staff, we need to make sure we've got Elemental Force. Increases your chance to apply status effects by 100%. You also want to look into your champion points. And in the blue champion points, you want to go up to Extended Might just here. You have to put at least 10 points into Piercing. And then you want to get the 40 points into Flawless Ritual, which is going to increase your chance to apply a Magical Status Effect by 30%. A Magical Status Effect includes the Chilled Effect. So now we've got the champion points applied, we've got 
everything in there. The only other thing that you can do is, as you can see here, I'm using an infused crusher our case is staff in this case on this build. Now, for ad pulls, you could swap your staff. So an infused crusher is only really useful on boss fights. The reason for that is an enchant can only apply to one enemy. So if you've got six enemies in an ad pull, only one of them is going to have the infused crusher applied to them. So instead, you could use a charge staff, which is going to increase the chance to apply status effects by 480% when it's golded out. So you still need to have an infused crusher staff on a boss to provide that 2,108 spell and physical pen. But for ad pulls, your enchant doesn't matter. You could use any enchant you want. You could use an absorb stamina, absorb health. You could use anything. It doesn't matter. You don't have to use a Crusher Enchant for ad pulls. That's in Trials and Dungeons. It doesn't really make that much difference because you can only apply it to one enemy. But the charged effect here is going to pretty much guarantee every single enemy, every single ad pull is going to be chilled. And then when we put down our blockade, we're able to cause that immobilization. This is especially good, like I say, for Nightblades and Templar tanks. So I am going to put the chilled staff on, uh, the charged staff, sorry. And just to kind of show you, we are going to be using the Vatishran one hand and shield as well. So we're going to walk into the ad pull. We're going to power bash. We're going to pull it all in. We're going to pulsar, and then we're going to blockade. That's going to be the rotation. The good thing about pulsar is not only is it going to cause that chilled effect, when we cause the chilled effect, that also means it's going to apply Minor Main, which is going to reduce all of the adds damage by 5%. It's also going to cause Minor Brittle, which increases the crit damage that our group do to those enemies. It's also given us Minor Mangle, which reduces the adds max health. So as long as it's not an elite ad or a boss, Minor Mangle is going to reduce the health of the adds instantly by 10%. We're also going to get minor protection for our nearby group members and for ourselves, reducing damage taken by 5%. So all of a sudden, we've got not only an immobilization by Slot and Frost Pulsar, but we've also got loads and loads of other things, buffs and debuffs. This is just going to be an absolutely fantastic way to control Ample. So let's do a little demonstration. So I'm going to walk into the Ample. We're going to Power Bash. So we're going to first of all walk in. We power bash to stack everything. We pulsar. And then we blockade. Everything is immobilized. So we've got an immobilization on everything. We've also reduced all the health instantly. And you can just keep reapplying this immobilization as soon as these enemies are off cooldown. You just cast your pulsar to get them back into that immobilized state. Let's try it again. Let's bring those ads and those ads together. So we'll grab everything. Once everything's here, pulsar, blockade, everything is immobilized. You can only immobilize six enemies at a time, but we can just keep, we can just double cast it, and it's not a problem. Once we're off cooldown, we're getting that immobilization every time. Pulsar, the blockade's already there. You don't have to recast blockade, but you do have to recast pulsar. So we go once again, uh, we're just going to walk in, as I say, Void Bash to pull everything in, Pulsar, and then Blockade. So Pulsar will need to be recast every four seconds to maintain the debuffs. You have to recast it every four seconds to maintain all of the different buffs and debuffs, which shouldn't be a problem. But as you can see, it, it works every time. You immobilize the enemy. So it doesn't matter what class of tank you're playing to be able to utilize this. Even on a Dragon Knight or a Warden, you could still utilize this method of play to provide your group with more debuffs and buffs. So this doesn't just this isn't just for the Nightblades and the Templars and those classes that struggle with crowd control or immobilizations. This is for everybody. Every class can use this. The fact that Pulsar provides so many different things in terms of 
group buffs and debuffs makes it very, very valuable anyway. Um, and when we're looking to kind of optimize a dungeon setup, this is a skill that I do want to try and fit into a build because it just provides so many different things. It's going to increase my group's DPS. It's going to provide additional safety in ad pulls by reducing the ad's damage and increasing our group's defense with the minor protection. So there's so many reasons why this is a good alternative for an immobilization. And the fact is, we're not, it's not taking up a bar space. It's not taking up a bar slot for something more useful. You would typically have a skill on your bar that is a crowd control skill already, whether it's talons, whether it's gripping shards, whether it's turn evil or something like that, you're gonna have one of those skills on your bar anyway. We're just simply replacing it with Pulsar, which is providing a lot more buffs, and we're using the Blockade. The fact that Blockade immobilizes chilled enemies is how we're able to benefit from this. So as you can see there, chilled enemies become frozen on our, and are immobilized for four seconds. And with Pulsar, the champion points that we suggested, the skills that we suggested, the passives that we suggested, and the charged ice staff, you are guaranteed to get Pulsar to proc the chill effect without fail as an area of an effect, as an AoE, every single time. So this is just too good to ignore. So I hope you found this video useful. Let me know how you get on utilizing this yourselves, guys, within some dungeons. And uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.